May the sky be peaceful. May the atmosphere be peaceful. May the earth be peaceful. May that eternal peace cometh upon us. Charging for battle are Veer Javans, the guardian angels of our skies, the dauntless sailors of our seas. The world remembers soldiers for what they do on the battlefield. But the number of lives a soldier takes in a war is very few as compared to the number of lives he saves when not at war. जलजला हुआ जिससे हमारे घर चले गए इन्होंने हमारी बहुत ही हेल्प की उन्होंने हमें तो बचाया अगर वो नहीं बचाते तो आज तक हमें पता नहीं क्या करते फॉर योर टुमारो दे गेव दैट टुडे दीज आर द ट्रू सन्स ऑफ इंडिया पेट्रियट्स एंड सेवियर्स who sacrifice themselves so that all indians may sleep in peace while the primary role of the indian army is to protect the territorial integrity of the country the secondary role is that of providing aid to civil authority in peace time while carrying out training for the primary role the indian army does get committed on its secondary role a number of times the ability of the three arms of the indian military to come together and perform as a single entity is the result of discipline training Thus is prepared a hardy soldier with a sense of responsibility. Every moment of his training, every aspect of his life, every facet of his makeover into a man of war also prepares him for his role as a soldier of peace. he learns discipline he learns teamwork these qualities are inculcated in every member of the armed forces tried in simulations and tested in battles these are the very qualities that come to the fore when he extends a helping hand to his fellow citizens cometh the hour cometh the man the moment a soldier sailor or airman dons his uniform it is instilled into him that he must provide aid to all fellow countrymen regardless of personal safety it is a duty from which he must never shirk every indian soldier born thus imbibes the skills of a fighter and the virtue of a savior He is the son of the soil who rises to the occasion whenever called upon to do so. He is also a messiah who rubs shoulders with his civilian counterparts to help save precious lives and the nation's heritage. He dutifully assists the government agencies to cope with internal threats or natural calamities whenever requisitioned to do so. Indian armed forces are not only protecting our border 
are ensuring our safety and security from the external aggressions, but at the time of peace, they are standing by the people, by the civilian authorities, whenever their services are called for. A peacetime role has been played successfully by our brave soldiers over the past decades as India evolved into a strong democratic republic. Today morning, the government has directed us to launch relief and rescue operations. And uh, without much ado, we must get our act going. On the special request of the civil administration, our forces have jointly conducted many successful operations, accomplishing rescue and evacuation operations, disaster management, maintenance of law and order, maintenance of essential services, and many other similar roles. By virtue of their organizational strength, motivation, training, discipline, and operational preparedness, they have always responded with promptness to any critical situation. Their reaction, speed, and capacity to mobilize instantaneously is a rare trait, which makes them an invaluable resource for all national contingencies. The armed forces uh, have a very major role to play. Like, you know, you take a case of uh, Bhuj earthquake. In Bhuj earthquake, what happened? The army was, of course, deployed in uh, very big numbers. And I was myself there. I was the southern army commander at that time, and I myself spent almost three months in uh, Bhuj. But it was also the Navy which was brought in to the nearest port and where they set up some hospitals. And the Air Force, of course, has got to fly to bring in the uh, supplies by air. So it is the all three wings of the armed forces which get really involved in a big way should a major calamity of that kind occur. Same thing happened during the tsunami also. All the three services were employed. It is not just in concerted large-scale efforts that the military extends a helping hand to the civilian. It is also in the small individual gestures that truly make the connect between the man in uniform and the civilian out of it. The army acts as responders of the last resort in any emergent situation that may be occurring in any part of the country. The armed forces have proved their mettle in the maintenance of essential services. On the 21st of July 2006, at 7.30 in the evening, a five-year-old child, Prince, fell into a 55-foot deep, 12 inches wide hole in village Haldi Hira, Kurukshetra. The hole had been created by an abandoned bore well site. Civil administration requisitioned army assistance at about 10:30 hours on 22nd July 2006. काम करते करते हमारे को कई एक परिस्थितियों का सामना करना पड़ा, जैसे कि उस कुएं में बहुत सारी मिट्टी थी, मिट्टी को बाहर निकालने के लिए हमारे को काफी टाइम लगा। 40 फट नीचे जाने के बाद में वहाँ पर सैंड आई, तो बहुत ऐसी सैंड थी कि जो कुएं से अपने आप नीचे गिरती जा रही थी। जो सैंड है प्रिंस के ऊपर गिरने वाली है बर्मा होता है जो लकड़ी में सुराख करने वाला उसकी मदद ली उसकी मदद लेकर हम सुराख की तरफ तक पहुंचे थोड़ी सी भी सैंड इसके ऊपर गिरने पर बच्चा ऐसे हो सकता है लेकिन कुदरत की देन थी जो के हम उसको बचा पाए प्रिंस कॉट द वर्ल्ड्स अटेंशन व्हेन द मीडिया रिलेड हिज हार्ट रेंचिंग स्टोरी वर्किंग इन टैंडम विद द सिविलियंस द आर्मी सोल्जर्स वर एबल टू रेस्क्यू द लिटिल बॉय ऑन द 23rd ऑफ जुलाई The teamwork between us, the synergy between us, as also the teamwork between the civil administration, the uh, media, the local population there, that we could accomplish so much with such less resources and which at such short notice. The men in fatigues have time and again shown great enterprise in disaster relief operations, be it an earthquake, flood, a drought, or a hurricane. The armed forces have battled the forces of nature to successfully handle each situation. Once we get an indication that uh, this uh, operation has to be mounted, the best uh, operators to start the ball rolling are the armed forces because 
by inherent uh, capability we can respond very fast by sea, by air or by ground. On 8th October 2005, a massive earthquake rocked Jammu and Kashmir causing widespread damage. The Indian Army launched a large-scale relief and rescue operation despite the loss of 45 of their own personnel with severe injuries to another 283 and severe damage to its infrastructure. The rescue and relief efforts were commenced on war footing. <laughs> गरों से निकाला इन लोगों ने इसीलिए ट्रेनिंग की होती है दूसरों को बचाने के लिए दूसरे के पास पहुंचने के लिए दूसरे की हमदर्दी करने के लिए The army rescue teams were the first to reach isolated inaccessible areas 40 relief camps were established 1200 people rescued 6000 civil patients treated 150 tons of rations and 18000 food packets were distributed अपनी फौज आई उन्होंने हमें पानी पिलाया खाना खिलाया और उसके बाद हमें यह टपरू जैसा बना कर दिया During the operation the army utilized the Indian Air Force helicopters for moving doctors and medical teams to affected areas and for evacuating the seriously injured The operation would not have been successful without the help from their comrades from the skies The men in blue have been in the forefront of many challenging peacetime operations. The most important peacetime role of the Indian Air Force is to provide humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, aid to civil power, you know, in, uh, during natural calamities and floods. Uh, towards this, the Indian Air Force has done a tremendous job, perhaps ever since its inception. It has its own specialized role in the joint relief and rescue operations. It provides quick evacuation and airlift operations, distribution of essential life-saving commodities, and the surveillance of affected areas. In our country, the occurrence of floods and sometimes, unfortunately, certain other natural disasters is a recurring thing, and it happens practically every year. And uh, I can very proudly say that there has never ever been an occasion where an Indian Air Force aircraft or helicopter has been delayed in arriving to render aid at any time. On the 26th of December 2004, another disaster shook the nation, a tsunami. Nature's worst calamity struck the Indian subcontinent a day after Christmas. The Indian Ocean was hit by an undersea earthquake, which started a colossal wave build. The coastal regions of the southern peninsula and neighboring islands were devastated by huge waves. It was a tsunami, the biggest disaster of this century. On receipt of the first information about the disaster, at 0815 hours, the armed forces swung into action. We got into action within one hour of this happening. The first message which we received was from our air base at Karnik, where unfortunately we lost our entire base. But notwithstanding the terrible tragedy that had struck them and not caring for what had happened to their families and others, they went straight to the helicopters in whatever clothes they were wearing and got airborne for the rescue operations of people around the island. This was coordinated by the Integrated Defence Staff, 
IDS. Well, the role of the armed forces uh, in the tsunami was a rather large one. Uh, for one, it, the tsunami uh, catastrophe was on such a scale that it affected the local administrations and their ability to react to the situation uh, very severely. A lot of people in the administration, especially in the Andamans, who would normally have organized relief and rescue were themselves so badly affected that you needed an outside agency to come and quickly take, take over those functions and uh, render the res rescue and relief. Innumerable lives were lost, but our brave soldiers were able to reduce this number and save about 30,000 of those who would have otherwise perished. Not only uh, were we addressing the disaster relief operations in our own country, uh, in the Andaman Nicobar Islands and the western and eastern coasts, but we had uh, uh, our missions straight away going off to the Maldives, to Sri Lanka and uh, to faraway Indonesia. And I think that encapsulates in the Indian capacity or the Indian Armed Forces capacity for uh, disaster relief operations. The three forces were jointly involved in this enormous effort to reach far-flung and remote areas for providing timely rescue assistance and relief. At the end of the third or fourth day, we had built up a force of about 35, 40 ships, 5,000 uh, men and about 20 to 25 aircraft and helicopters. I am very proud of the fact that we were able to render assistance to a vast sea of humanity in the face of a very grave catastrophe. The Indian Navy has time and again established its credence as a force par excellence. We in the Navy are particularly well equipped to tackle many of these by transporting equipment, material, supplies, medicines, doctors to remote places which may not otherwise be accessible at that particular point in time. We have certain capabilities in terms of helicopters, in terms of ships, which can easily reach these areas. The Indian Navy has always risen to any contingency with its unique blend of speed, professionalism, panache and humane attitude. Operation Sukoon is another example of their humanitarian efforts. In 2006, July, I think it was, it just happened that a squadron of Indian Navy ships happened to be in the Mediterranean under the command of a flag officer. When we got information that there was an emergency in Lebanon and a lot of Indian nationals had to be evacuated in a hurry. Now, the numbers were so large that it couldn't have been done by air. Uh, we were fortunate, our ships were there and within a matter of few days, the ships arrived in Lebanon and thereafter they undertook this operation which we codenamed Sukoon. The largest post-independence civilian evacuation operation undertaken by the Indian Navy at Beirut, Lebanon. I took all the four ships. We went through a blockade which was very fiercely controlled by the Israeli Navy. We also had to encounter in pitch dark conditions with identities not fully known, many other navies and some neutral platform. That is where training came to fore. We sent in one ship at a time into Beirut Harbor, under guard all the time, and picked out a total of 2,280 evacuees, which included not only Indians, but Sri Lankans, and citizens of Nepal, as well as a few NRIs from the United States. The Indian Navy was rescuing nationals of other countries besides their own. In the first lift, on 21st July 2006, 608 persons were evacuated, while in the second lift, on 23rd July 2006, another 887 persons were evacuated. This operation lasted for a total of 10 days, within which period all these evacuees were shifted in sequence by all four ships from Beirut to Cyprus, from where the government had sent Air India 747s, which picked them in waves of two aircraft at a time. The operation was very successful. 
braving the perils of the oceans and the hardy life of the seas, the men of the Indian Navy have accomplished many such arduous tasks with unstinting dedication and valor. As the situation is unfolding, uh, we are taking on this onerous task as a first line of uh, duty and meeting all the requirements as and when they come up. After the immense damage caused by the Indian Ocean, it was now the River Kosi which proved its might by flooding the fertile lands of Bihar. Some call it the curse of the Kosi. The Kosi has always been called the river of sorrow because of the flooding it causes every year. But in 2008, the river has caused a catastrophe unparalleled in 50 years. suffering and trauma of the people of Bihar had incited deep emotions in the rest of the Indian population. But it was the men of the three wings of the armed forces, along with the NGOs and civil administration, which emerged as the true saviors. Hundreds of defense personnel joined the administration in relief and rescue operations evacuating millions of maroon people and providing food and medical aid to those displaced by the waters of the Kosi. Following the breach in the Kusaha Dam in Nepal, relief, aerial relief operation was started on 21st of August and uh, Air Force made available helicopters for airlifting of food packets and dropping in areas badly affected. The operation was basically started in Supol, Narpatganj of Araria and Madhepura districts and thereafter the number of uh, helicopters made available were increased up to 11. When the men in uniform began their humanitarian efforts, half of Bihar was underwater. People were clinging to rooftops or trees and eating leaves and plants to survive. The Indian Armed Forces began the rescue operations in earnest as soon as the disaster struck. Thanks to their capability to mobilize at short notice and organizational competence, the relief tasks were begun straight away. One must realize that unlike the normal operations where you have some lead time, is the disaster relief operations are absolutely cold start operations. The moment they start, you are expected to perform, you are expected to plan and you are expected to build up absolutely in quick time to your max relief capability. This is a great challenge for the Air Force. But the Air Force men rose gallantly to the occasion and reacted in record time. You know, the Indian Air Force uh, can provide uh, immediate relief, but in the end uh, it has to be the Army, uh, you know, organizing things on the ground and the Navy going in and, uh, you know, evacuating people with their boats. In keeping with these requirements, their counterparts in the Army and Navy were plying the boundless flood waters in boats, effecting daring rescue and evacuation operations. The main task uh, which has been assigned to the Navy during this flood relief operation is basically to provide the relief materials uh, which has been brought by various organizations and to get the people back to such camps wherein the facility of uh, providing the relief aid is available. The men of our three forces kept up the tradition of service before self in yet another instance. It's a tribute to all the people who participated in this operation, wherein they landed on goosenecks well beyond the stipulated time frame of the duties and carried out these relief operations. They have proved beyond doubt their integrity and loyalty to the nation and its people. 
in case of a disaster uh, request coming to us, I would say that immediate sort of actions can be undertaken in less than 12 hours. Whether it be the watery terrains of a flooded village or the rocky heights of a mountain cliff, they have performed tasks of utmost daring and courage, keeping afloat the flag of their organizations. We have an excellent response system in place where the entire operation is very well coordinated and regulated so that aid and relief reaches the struck people in our, as fast a time frame as possible. The Indian Armed Forces. Not enough can be said about the sacrifices that they make. All the men who participated in these operations did so with full gusto, with total disregard to their own comforts and safety, and thereby provided good relief to a very large number of populace that was affected by these disasters. I am sure all the men serving in the Navy as well as the other armed forces would continue to do so whenever the call of duty comes. They emulate the words of our pledge.